So I'm intrigued by, by the, the uh, this idea of humility and how it was practiced by the, uh, by the founders, by Jefferson and Madison. How can how do you think we can practice it in our own day to day lives in classrooms and schools? Um, what does humility look like in our world? Well, you know, Madison uh, is called the father of the Constitution, and I think for good reason. But one of the things that we don't often think about is that on fully two thirds of the key votes throughout that four-month process. Mm -hmm. Madison was on the losing end. Wow. And yet he stayed in the mix, right? He, 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 he recognized that even though he wasn't getting everything that he wanted, that the plan as a whole was, was uh, better than anything else. And about at the end of the convention, you know, there's this dramatic moment when they were going to scratch uh, some old wounds and, and perhaps go into another uh, long uh, debate that might torpedo the whole thing. And Washington intervened. He didn't speak except for that one occasion at the Constitutional Convention. And then uh, the elderly Ben Franklin stood up and he said, what we need to do here is doubt a little bit of our own infallibility. In other words, nobody here, even in this gathering of the, 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 the delegates of the Constitutional Convention knows it all. Not even Washington. We're not giving absolute power to him. Every one of us, Franklin said, would have some reason to think of this thing as a, as a catastrophe. Let's doubt our own infallibility, though. Recognize that we're fallible. Great phrase. And come to a compromise. And yes, it's really important to debate that compromise and that set of compromises. And that's what we love doing at the Bill of Rights Institute. But I think what we can learn from that is that intellectually, you don't know it all. You never will. Morally, you shouldn't uh, act with superiority over people, whether you know more than they do or not. The goal here, and the only way that we're ever going to get back to a better sense of what the unum is and how that unites Americans, is if we all act a little bit more out of a sense that none of us is infallible. Because I think what we see in the political process so often is that the two major parties suppose that they can have a permanent realignment. And that drives a lot of our discourse these days. And a lot of people feel like if I could get all of my viewpoint, all of my policy positions, and we could bundle them all together, and they'd be one big package, and we put them all into effect, the, 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 the nation would be saved. And that's a bad way, that's a bad mental model. It's a mental model that suggests of the other side, you guys have nothing to offer. And I think in our country, we've made so many things in that zero-sum game right. that that mental model has come to dominate a lot of our social interaction. And what happens then is this ever-increasing arms race where the idea is that we will vanquish our foe mm -hmm. and we will do so with maximum contempt for who they are, even as human beings. And it's a hard thing to recover that sense of, you know what, we're all in this together. It's not going to be done by uh, mantra or, or slogan. It's not going to be done by a 12-step plan. It's going to require a really deep change of heart that I think is going to have to start with young people. Because the sad thing today is that there are a lot of uh, citizens in this country who are pretty dug in on that mental model. And what I love about so many of the young people that I see today is that they do have more openness to that potential, that they can learn from other groups. And that in, in, in really being worried about that kind of zero-sum political ideology, right. there's an openness to the thought that maybe the other side has something to offer, whatever that other side or sides might be. And I think the job of us as educators is to ensure that that mentality gains more and more strength. Because in that humility, I think, really does come the possibility of, of a recovery of what the UNAM is.